about pre and post op that men aesthetics give you so i have my paperwork i'm gonna go over it i'm gonna read it but first let's get into this body sisters i'm gonna be three weeks post op on monday and i already got my thigh high my stage two thigh high taken in so let's look you can already see my shape starting to come in this is my phone y'all so don't pay that no mind but you can see the shape is starting to form. But still fat. Uh, but it's coming in. It's coming in, girls. Get into the shape. I'll be so glad when I don't have to wear this stuff no more. But it's comfortable. And mind you, I just got this stage two taken in. And I'm already on the second hook, girls. So, yeah. So I have a chair here. I'm going to be sitting down, but not on my butt. I know y'all going to be inboxing me like, Gigi, what you doing sitting down? No, I have my chair. I'm going to turn it backwards. And I have my butt hanging off the back of the chair, girls. You're going to have to get creative with this whole journey. I ordered me a waist trainer, guys, and I'm waiting for that to come two days. So hopefully that come in the mail. Y'all, yes, I'm excited. We're going to get this waist snatched, dolls. And mind you, I'm not real big on a small, teeny waist. I just want my stomach flat. Like, my waist don't have to be like a 20-nothing. Like, I don't care. I don't mind a little bit of thickness. You feel me? But, yeah. Let's get into this information, girls. I know y'all be asking me a lot of questions. So, I'm just here to give you guys the answer because you know I tell you everything. Now, first, I want to talk about pre-op. I don't know what I thought pre-op was going to be when I got to me. But I thought I was going to be sitting down at a desk. Me and someone that works at Men's Static, and we was going to go over, you know, my payments and stuff like that. But that was not what happened when I got to Men's Static. It was nothing like that. Pre-op was basically you walk inside of Men's Static, and they hand you a clipboard with about this many papers. It's like so many papers, girls, that you have to sign. And you read over the paperwork, and you're just sitting in the main lobby with everybody else, and... After you go over the paperwork, you're just signing your whole life away. They ask you about social media. They ask you about, they're just giving you information, telling you basically they're not responsible for anything that happens to you. Basically, you're signing your life away. So, yeah, you just sit in the main comment area, you fill out the paperwork. Then once you finish filling out the paperwork, you take it to the front desk where everybody is and you just go over your payments and stuff like that. I already paid off my surgery prior to coming to me aesthetic so i didn't have to pay for anything the only thing i paid for was my chin because that was the add-on once i got there i didn't want to pay for that in advance and i also suggest sisters if you plan on adding on any areas don't pay for it until you get to mia just wait because you might change your mind along the way like you might end up not wanting to and then they they charge you to remove something off of your package so if you want to add on an area your arms, your chin, your inner thighs, anything additional, wait until you get to me to pay it off. That way you still have time and you still have your money, sisters. So, yeah, you just go to the counter, you give them the paperwork back, and they ask you, do you want to add on additional areas? You tell them, yes, I told them my chin, and you give them your card right then and there. I don't know why I thought it was going to be more personal than that, but it wasn't. That's basically your pre-op. You just... You're just doing that. And that's the paperwork portion of your pre-op. That's not for us when you go see Dr. Fasusi and all that. And he mock you up and all that. That's not that. I'm just talking about the payment portion of the pre-op. I'm thinking it was going to be more personal. Like, you go to a room. You sit down with somebody. Y'all go over your, you know, like how a regular consultation is. But no, it's not like that. You in a regular comment area. The lobby that they always show on me and status instagram you're in that area and you walking up to a desk and you pay right then and there whatever the case may be so that was that and i don't know and like i said i don't know if that was just because my pre-op and surgery was the same day which was on a monday if you get surgery on a monday your pre-op and surgery is on the same day so i don't know if that was just my case or if that's just how they operate so y'all if you have dogs on here that know the answer to that 
put it below so the other girls can know. I'm just going to tell y'all about what I experienced. So next, let's get into the post-op information that they give you. Once you finish getting your surgery and on your last day of post-op, admit. They give you these paperwork. Also, you have to request it. Like, you have to request it. One is, let's see, what's the first one? They come in this mid-static envelope. I don't know if y'all can see it, but I'm not getting up because it's a hassle to get back down. So, the first one is, this is your flight letter. So, if you're catching a flight, you want to get a flight letter to show to the airline that you just had surgery so they can accommodate you along the way. It just say mid-static. Y'all going to make me get up. And, let me read it first, and then I'll get up and show you. So, it just say mid-static, and then it say to whom it may concern, this letter is to inform you that our patient, blank, just had a surgical procedure for medical reasons. We request that you accommodate her as much as possible. If you have any questions regarding my patient, please call and enhance their number and then to say thank you. And this is the flight letter that you will receive. I don't need y'all all up in my name. But it looks like this. It has your day, everything, everything. All the information. So make sure, girls, you request a flight letter. Even though, like, I didn't even use my flight letter once I got on the um plane. I didn't even show the people. That's because my flight was empty and I got lucky and I was able to have a whole road to myself. So I was able to lay down on my flight. So I didn't even need to show them this. I didn't do wheelchair assistance. I told I think I told y'all that before. I didn't want wheelchair assistance because you're supposed to walk anyway. Don't handicap yourself, sisters. Like, if you can do it by yourself, do it by yourself. Don't be dramatic, girls. I know so bad you want to feel like you handicapped because you know you just had surgery, but no. Walk. If you can walk, walk. If you walked the whole time you was in Miami, why do you need wheelchair assistance in the airport? Unless you're, like, in a big, huge terminal. But for me, I wasn't in a big, huge terminal, so I was like, I can walk. I don't need wheelchair assistance. You need to walk anyway. So do that. Well, the next letter that I have is my return to work letter. This is a letter you also have to request, sisters. It's just a letter stating when you can return back to work. I took three weeks off of work. So, and if you have a desk job or a job where you sit down a lot, they request that you take off three weeks. This letter states, is a regular men letter, letter letterhead. And it says, to whom it may concern? This letter is to inform you that our patient blank has surgical procedure on blank. Due to the following, restrictions needs to be excused from work. No heavy lifting, no bending or climbing, no sitting for long periods of time, no pushing or pulling, no driving until patient has completed all medication, no drinking until patient has completed all medication. Other than these, there are no other restrictions. And the patient is clear to go back to work on the given date. That's when they put the date that you're able to return back to work. Like I stated, I took off three weeks. So I have three weeks from my surgery date to go back to work. And then they say, if you have any questions regarding my patient, please give us a call. And thank you. And it looks just like this, dolls. Return back to work date. Me instead of let it hit. Yeah, so it looks like this. So make sure you request a return back to work paper just in case you have to give your job some type of information. You want to be safe, then sorry. Even if you feel like you don't need it, get it anyway. You just add them at the front desk. They give it to you right there at the front desk of me and study. Don't forget, it's important. Next, you get your post-op paperwork and it just say lipo section post-operative instructions and then it goes through what you're supposed to do immediately after surgery it says your first post-operative appointment will be the next day after your surgery so after your surgery that's when you go to your post-op appointment and that's when you see dr fasusi again for the last or whatever doctor you have you see them for the last time that's when you get all this paperwork you get this paperwork as well on your last post-op appointment and then number two you must be taken home by a responsible adult over the age of 18 so, if you're getting surgery, you need somebody to come and pick you up, basically. If you're at a recovery house, of course, a recovery house staff will come and pick you up. And if you're staying at an Airbnb or hotel, you need someone to come and pick you up over the age of 18. 
And number three, you are not allowed to travel by boat, plane, cruise, train, etc. for a total of five days minimum. So a lot of those always inbox and ask me, how long did you stay in Miami? I stayed, I, you have to go to Miami a day before your surgery and you have to stay an additional five days after your surgery. So I stayed an additional five days after my surgery. So I was in Miami for a total of seven days. So I was there the day before, the day of surgery, and five days after. Okay, number four, every two to three hours, take deep breaths to expand your lungs. I definitely had to do this. Everybody should have to do this because it helps with your recovery process. So all you're doing is breathing in your lungs and breathing out your nose. You just do that every so often. I'll think about it here and there throughout the day and I'll just do it. And that helps with your lungs. Okay, number five, food and liquids. Drinks lots of fluids after surgery. You should consume at least eight to 10 cups of water, eight ounces each. It is important to stay hydrated. Yes, you have to drink lots and lots and lots of fluid. When I say me and my best friend went through more than two cases of water alone, a bottle of waters, we did. And that's not even including our Pedialyte and lots and lots of pineapple juice. You need lots and lots of pineapple juice. We didn't drink as much Pedialyte, but we drank it probably like one or two. We had two bottles of Pedialyte, but lots of pineapple juice and lots of water. You have to stay hydrated. You may start eating after your procedure with something like such as low sodium soups and crackers. Like the first day of surgery, you're really not going to want to eat. You, they're gonna really you're gonna have to force yourself to eat because you're you're really not gonna have no appetite you're gonna feel a mess you're gonna feel whack you're gonna feel so like the first two days were a drag i told y'all like it's literally a drag you have to eat something small just like they said soup and crackers and then after that you can have a regular meal say follow a liquid diet for the first day after surgery and transition to soft diet for the next two days followed by a regular diet like i stated after the first day you can start pretty much eating regular food all right number six do not take your medication with an empty stomach uh, oxycontin that they give you makes you feel terrible they give you a total of 12 so i took three the whole time i was there it makes you feel a mess you're not even going to want to take it everybody's body is different they experience symptoms differently but it made me feel sick nauseous dizzy like no i i pretty much stuck to my tylenol extra strength muscle aches and pain you know that tylenol and my tylenol pms that's what i pretty much did but for like the first two days i did take an oxycontin for like the first two to three days like one each day like i told you I only took three so one each day i probably took an oxycontin i think before my massages i did i did that because you will need some type of pain medicine before you go and get your massages because you will be extremely sore okay um do not take any um, aspirin type medication for two weeks after surgery only the pain medicine prescribed by the surgeon like Tylenol. do not take any herbal supplements you are allowed to resume taking your multivitamin and iron supplements after surgery at post-op i asked out to Pasusi, is it okay for me to go back taking my iron pills and things like that he kept on telling me like what what, what you trying to take what you trying to take because he wasn't trying to hear that first i was like i just want to take my floor decks and my vitamins and stuff like that then he like okay that's okay so you can resume your vitamins right after surgery you want to make sure you be on top especially your arm pills and things like that because you're going to be you lost a lot of blood you just had a major surgery and i didn't get self saver so i wanted to be on top of my arm pills because i know previously going into surgery i used to be very anemic so i, I wanted my vitamins back in me so i was able to do that the next day so Number 10, sitting instructions. No pressure on your butt or hips for three weeks. No pressure. You're strictly on your stomach, girls, or kneeling on your knees. Hence, you need the knee pads. And I still didn't get mine, but y'all get them. For three weeks after your surgery, you can sit two to three times per day for no more than 10 to 15 minutes with the BBL pillow. After three weeks, you can begin sitting on your buttocks for 30 to 45 minutes. At a time, not more than three times a day. After 45 minutes, you will need your BBL pillow. So after Monday, I can be able to sit on my butts for 30 to 45 minutes, which I don't think I'm doing, y'all, because I'm not ready to sit on this edge. I'm going to hold out as long as possible. Now, I will use my BBL pillow and stuff when I'm at work, but I'm not sitting on my butt. 
not at three weeks even though they say you can and like in dominican and places like that they tell you, you can sit on your butt right after surgery i just don't trust it y'all it's crazy because you can tell some of these girls that been sitting on their ass right after surgery because their butt looks square to me like you can notice it like it sit high and it look like square like flat in the middle like no girl we just pay for this i like my shit round so i'm gonna try to hold out as long as possible oozing is normal from this it's just like for several days usually it's the thin bloody fluid bruises should be gone within one to three weeks you have to use your arnica gel and pills to eliminate bruising faster compression garment the elastic compression garment should be worn at all times you can remove it to shower twice a day and then put it on as quickly as possible yeah so i wash my fire hot while i'm in the shower you will wake up for surgery in your stage one garment. This must be worn with foams and board 24 seven for three weeks. It's low compression. So they put you in your stage one straight out of surgery. They want you to wear it for three weeks. Unfortunately for me, the Faha that men gave me was extremely big. And I only stayed in that Faha for a total of five days before I switched it to my stage two garment from Pretty Girl Curves. I normally follow doctor's rules. But that one I could not follow. I was getting no compression. I felt extremely loose. My foams and board was just flying all over the place inside me because I had no compression. So I switched to my stage two. Um, when it comes to that dose, you use your own judgment and you use what's best for your body. I'm not telling y'all to do that. You make your own choices. That was just the choice that I made and I've been great ever since I did it. The first three weeks require you use your abdominal board and foams and insert at all times. Got them on now. You have to keep them on. I take my ad boy out to sleep. I don't sleep with it. We recommend purchasing a total of two garments so you can have fresh clean garments to wear while soil garment is being worn. That's another question. A lot of dogs ask me how many stage ones did I buy. I only had the one that man gave me. But I do highly recommend that you get multiple stage twos. What I do regret is not getting two stage twos from Pretty Girl Curves. I love that fire high. It's, it's, it's great. After three weeks from surgery date, the stage two garment must be worn 24-7 for a total of six months, dolls. It used to be three months, now it's six months. Both low and high compression garments should be the same size. No waist training until you are done with your stage two garment. You need to wear your compression socks for 24-7 for seven days. That's another question a lot of dolls ask. You have to wear your compression socks for seven days. Activity. You must begin walking the evening of surgery. Bed rest alone is not allowed. You have to walk, walk, walk. You want to get that blood circulating assistance. That's what I'm telling you. You don't need wheelchair assistance unless you're really man down. Avoid bending at the waist. That's why I told you dolls to get the grabber. See, I've been giving y'all the real information, sisters. I'm telling y'all, get that grabber. It seems crazy, but you need it. Do not attempt to empty the dishwasher, laundry, mop, broom, baking. Just no bending. You can start gradually increasing your activity beyond just walking six weeks after your procedure. Talk to your surgeon before performing any vigorous physical activity. No weightlifting, push-up, pulling, or core engaging activities for six weeks. So no gym activity for six weeks, though. Work. Expect to take at least seven days off of work if you're employed. Please limit all activities for the first week following procedures. If you have a desk job, you can return to work after three weeks showering start showering 24 hours after surgery do so twice a day use water hippocleans so give it to you free op on all incisions in private areas vagina and anus with the soft circular motion and drop do not rub wounds aggressively this is to be done for two weeks after surgery dolls i'm three weeks post-op and i still use my hippocleans and dial soap i have not yet went back to my dove or olive olay i haven't worn perfume i haven't done any of that strictly hippie cleanse dial soap and regular jergens lotions to moisturize my skin or like i've shown you dogs the bio oil or something natural like that like i have not used any chemicals on my body we don't want any infections like this part right here i took extremely serious like we don't want infections those use that hemp cleanse soap the bottle that man gives you is extremely small and it's not going to last you three weeks or two weeks like they say you need an extra bottle so make sure you buy your hemp cleanse and i had the three pack of dial antibacterial soap the gold bars so make sure you use that for as long as you can like i'm three weeks and i'm still not going to stop until i use it all up so 
yeah never use alcohol or peroxide it kills healthy tissues do not use warm or hot pads on wounds at the shower and reapply the pressure garment and abdominal pads to cover the incisions you cannot submerge yourself in bathtub pools jacuzzi hot tub ocean until six to four weeks after surgery so no pools no tubs none of that sleeping you must sleep on your stomach for three weeks post-op treatments and massages we recommend starting lymphatic drainage massage as soon as the day of your post-op. Once you're done, we recommend three massages at, your, at our clinic. You should continue having them two to three times a week on the second to third week post-op. I still get three massages a week from my personal masseuse at home. When I was in med, I had a total of five massages. Three for men and two personal ones. Massages are important and they're also extremely, extremely expensive, sisters. So have your coins ready save 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 because they high as shit now once you're three weeks post out you can start ultrasound captivation and on radio frequencies up to two times a week and it can be one captivation and one radio frequencies per week it is recommended to continue receiving a total of 10 to 12 massages post out long-term post-operative care do not drive for five to seven days following procedure or until cleared to do so by your surgeon now i tried to drive which i did i was able to do it i drove to the market and to me the hardest part was getting in and out of my car i sit on my bbl pillow for me aesthetics and i also have a boppy pillow that i propped up behind my back so once you get comfortable in the car it's doable you can drive sisters but to me my hardest part is getting in and, in and out of my car like my car is not huge so it's like I have to duck down to get in the car and once I'm inside the car, I'm good. No smoking is allowed six weeks before and six weeks after surgery. Now, like I said, this is I had to quit smoking in order to get the surgery and I stopped two to three months prior to surgery and I have not smoked since. So I don't intend on going back smoking. If you can stop smoking for surgery and you can wait just six weeks after surgery, what's the point of going back smoking? I mean, it's a bad habit anyway, so you might as well just give it up for good. No alcohol for two weeks after surgery and went off all pain medication. So I can drink now, sister, but I've been scared to drink because I feel like I don't know if it's going to make me swell up or not. And I guess I won't know until I try it. So maybe today I'll try to have a drink since I'll be three weeks Monday. So I don't know. No sexual intercourse for two weeks. Continue to be cautious for an additional two weeks. So you can have sex after two weeks and then act, and then you still have to be cautious for additional two weeks. I already had sex, girls. I ain't even gonna lie to you. And it was okay. It was fine. It didn't hurt. It was normal. I was cautious. My friend, he was acting like he was scared to touch me. I was still hard as a rock, but we got it cracking though. Do not undergo any dental procedures for a month after surgery to avoid infections. Please avoid direct sun exposure for to the wounds. Eight weeks after surgery, start using sunscreen. Ten days after surgery, I didn't do that. You must be seen in the clinic for monthly follow-up visit first three months. I did go see my PCP for a post-op appointment once I returned home. I do not plan on going back to med studies for a three months follow-up, but you can do that at your own discretion. It says it's normal to have bruising and swelling. Tenderness can last up to three months. If you experience a fever, shortness of breath, chest pains, or any unusual pain in the operated area, you, you must notify the doctor of the office immediately. Then they give you an after hours emergency contact number to me aesthetics that you call. And then they give you Dr. Fasusi Alvarez Miho and all that information at the bottom. And that's it. On the back of the page, it just tell you where the doctors have privileges at, at the hospitals in Miami. The different hospitals in Miami. And just give you the contact information for those. And that's pretty much it, though, as far as the paperwork that they give you at Me Aesthetics. So I hope that information was helpful. Take notes. And I just want you all to be aware of what's to come. Don't forget to ask for your paperwork at post op. Like, it's very important. You want to have your paperwork for your job. And you also want to have your paperwork for your flight. Just in case you do have a crowded flight, you want them to be able to accommodate you. So that's that. I do plan on doing a video on how I rode the plane and how to drive and how to do number two. Because that's also questions that you girls ask me. 
And I'll see you dolls shortly. Thanks for watching. I don't even wanna go back home. Hopefully I can be oh, my own.